Oh, hey, what's up, everybody? So I'm currently out here freezing my butt off for science again. We're going to be testing out the filament puller. Um, so here's what I got. This is my setup. Um, currently have the frequency gin, the puller. This is actually a thermometer that uh, comes off the front of a uh, single air conditioner that we use at work for our panels when it one goes bad. I decided I was going to stick this in my water bath and uh, just give me a temperature of my water in my bath, which is currently a lot warmer than it is outside. So my water bath is 13 degrees Celsius or 50 degree, 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So I got my frequency gen, which I need to set up. Let's see if I still got one in there. There we go. Put that up and uh, don't rip everything off the bench. Get this at least pulling, turning. It's going backwards. Um, so I'll need to switch that around really quickly. But uh, let me give you a, a, an overview of what I got. Basically, I've got what I showed you last time. I got the extruder, the water bath with the water running. Now, if you look at the water level, it's kind of hard to see to even see the water. But basically, it's but my whole table's like leaning, so the water bath is like this. But that's okay. So it's pouring out of the back and hardly ever, not even really coming out of the front at all. But that's okay. And then I've got my puller, which is running backwards at the moment. I'll need to switch some leads around, and we're running everything out the end I'm just gonna let it go where it goes I did add these little clips which I may redo and that allows me to keep the filament somewhat rolling in the correct direction or staying in one spot so I'm gonna set this up I'm gonna try to get some measurements and um, I did up my my temperature 10 degrees um, I don't think it was quite hot enough in my opinion so um, I may need to turn it down, but I I upped it. We'll see what happens. Um, as cold as my water bath is, huh? We should be all right. Okay, so that's what I got. I got two batteries back here. One battery runs this on 12 volts. The other battery runs my motor. Um, yep, that's it. If you guys haven't seen me build this and what this is, go check out my last video. So that's it. Let's get on with testing. I'm gonna do some time lapse of me just trying to set stuff up, and when I get it going. We'll get it going. It's not too cold out here, but man, it's cold enough. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. All right. That's good enough. All right, do a little time lapse. All right, so the stepper motor driver that's on this does have a reverse um, switch directions, basically by high or low signal. I just didn't hook it up because I'm only running one direction. So I switched the leads on the motors. Now it's running in the right direction. So we'll see what happens. Well, interesting stuff. Here's what I found out. It's really hard to pull it and get it a smaller size or a bigger size. It's pushing it out faster than I'm pulling to keep the size correct. So I'm gonna have to make my orifice bigger and pull it faster. Um, yeah, because right now I am flying just real fast just to see what tolerances I get and how, you know how it looks and uh, check out how fast this thing is extruding alright <clears throat> those guys out there doing 
ink tests. Watch this. Did you see it? There it goes, ready? Down on the floor it went. I mean, it's moving out of there. But, it's way too small because I have to pull it um, fairly fast in order to get it out. Now I can slow this down almost to uh, um, one kilohertz. Well, about, we'll do about 1.5. And it's uh, closer to your normal speed you would imagine. See it there? It's still fast, but the size is closer. It's actually pretty darn close, but it's not on. So if I speed it up even to like this fast, I, mean, I can really pull it out of there. It's actually slipping on the wheel because it's too small. Yeah, you get the idea. Put it back there and you can see the size difference go through there. So, um, let's, uh, I'll keep playing with it for a few more minutes and then I'll get a measurement on how long in a minute and also, uh, um, also the tolerances. So, we'll set this back up and time lapse a little bit more. Alright, we're running at full speed uh, on this motor and we're running at uh, 1.4 kilohertz over here. I don't know what that relates to RPM. You could probably calculate it actually. And uh, I'm going to do a time test. So, one minute. Ready? Go. See what we got there? Let's put it this way. It's a lot. So that was one minute's worth. And this is what I got right here. <laughs> See how long that piece is? It's pretty good, man. Let me measure. All right. Uh, Eleven and a half foot per minute. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was one minute's worth. That's pretty crazy. So, there you go. 11 and a half feet a minute. That's crazy. My tolerances, like I said, are a, are a little shy. So when I get to speed, it'll probably be a little slower. But, at 1.5 millimeters, which is relatively close, that's what I got. 1.27, 1.25, 1.47. So my tolerances are pretty far out. Even with pulling it through the water bath. 
I think that has a lot to do with how much I'm pushing out of the extruder. Let's grab another piece. <coughs> grab that long run I just did right there and we'll measure it. Look at that, just while I was filming here, so much went off that thing. That's crazy. Alright, let's see if these tolerances are any better. These, these actually look, just by looking at it, it looks better. 1.29, 1 1.25, 1 1.29, 1 1.35, 1 1.29, 1.35, so still way out of tolerance on these. So we've got some work to do, got some work ahead of us, but uh, we got to start somewhere. All right, well, that was the, the quick test. I just wanted to see if it would work and how well it would work and you know, just get an idea so I know what to I know what to do now. And let me show you what it does when you slow it down to the point where it's it's going uh let's see if I can set the camera right right here. When it's going too slow to try to make up for speed, this is what happens. You get stuff like this, and that's not going to work. So my my tolerance is closer now; it's bigger, but I'm pulling it too slow, and I can't get it. I can't get it to go through my wheel fast enough. So if I speed the speed the puller back up here, look at that big knot. <laughs> There's another big knot. Might have to run that one out. I'll get it here in a second. There we go. So we're slowing down. So if I speed this wheel up, I can pull it straight, pull it tight. And that's what I'm going to have to do. Gonna have to, I might even put that old nozzle back on there and uh, try to pull it out because that was actually probably that's probably about the right size. So anyway, there's your there's your thoughts and the type of plastic I'm using is very elastic, uh, more so than the normal stuff, the normal ABS. So I really think if I if I try a different type of plastic, I'm going to have a different type of result. So just keep that in mind too. It's going to be a factor. All right. Well, that's all for now. Russ with RWGResearch.com. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys another day. Dun dun dun. Peace out, homie G's. That's right, homie. Jeez.